So, variation according to context. In the handout, you've got uh, this little cartoon here. Can you uh, try and work out what's going on? <laughs> Anybody uh, volunteer to leave this out? <laughs> volunteer? And I fart all the time. <laughs> I see, perhaps you'd like to go through the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this all means, right? So, how did they get written down so wrongly? <laughs> Any idea? Did you understand? Yeah, let's, let's say that the person tried to write it in the sand. So, what led to the mistranscription? Yeah, I think more specific. I mean, they didn't understand what the whole thing was about. They understood something that was different. They were not able to yeah. write down what they were hearing in it. Perhaps okay. the context. I appreciate that. <laughs> 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 I'd like more specific, please. More specific. <laughs> 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 Word boundaries. Word boundaries is nicer. They were transcribing what they heard. Phonetic. 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 Kind of phonetic, folk phonetic, you might say. They're writing it after they think they hear it. <laughs> yeah, so writing it after they think they hear it. Uh, and there's a word boundaries issue where the um, consonant at the end of one word is migrating to the beginning of the next word, which happens to begin with a vowel, which is a, a process which John Field calls re-syllabification. Resyllabification, where the um, consonant migrates to the next word, or seems to, to the listener. Resyllabification, awareness of that, is something that is worth knowing from a student's point of view. So the next activity is uh, focusing a little bit on that. In this activity, you have to go through the maze from top left to bottom right, going through the hexagon. You can only go through a doorway, you can't go through a wall. So sometimes you're expected to be a doorway, but there isn't one. Watch out for that. Uh, here's the rule. You go through, if the phrase, if the, if the past tense CD sounds like a T at the beginning of the next word. And here's an example. Book, book to room, book to room, book to room, book to room. It sounds like a T at the beginning of the next word. Book to room. <coughs> Whereas uh, added, added oil, it doesn't. It sounds like if added oil. So you can't go through that one because it doesn't follow the rule. It has to sound like a T. <coughs> Try that for a moment. I won't let you go through it all the way through, but give it a go. Do you understand how this works? Yes. Anybody got a question? Right, and the answer key is actually in the booklet as well. Which is, that's the answer there. So I'm um, having reached this point, we can do a choral drill answer. Repeat after me. Book to room. To room. Book to room. Check tin. Tin. Check tin. Enjoyable, right? <laughs> yeah, let, no, let's not go to the end. Let's move on quickly. What's that? Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. How did it come to be mistranscribed so badly? And be specific, please. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Because, because, because the T at the end of salt has joined to the following vowel. Right, that's one. There's four. There's four things, right? One of them is that. The T has migrated to the and salt. So that's one thing. The uh, resyllabification. The and is weak, so the uh, 
the subscribe of the barrel read form. That's the second one. The M is in the next P. That's the third one. The M has mutated into an M, so that the lips are together, ready to pronounce pepper, which is uh, assimilation. That's the third one. And the final E is a shrub. And the final vowel is a shrub. That's right. The pepper. Okay, but that hasn't affected the transcription, unfortunately. Yeah. Salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. No, really. Edition. That's the fourth one. Edition. How are you looking at the answer key? <laughs> There's an addition of the uh, D in and as well. Four processes, all in one small sample. Salt and pepper. It's uh, worth becoming aware of this kind of thing because you don't hear what you expect to hear. It's not what you get in a dictionary. So here's another kind of game uh, that, that's the explanation that how is working hard. <laughs> well, everyone else is working hard. <laughs> uh, and here's a game that builds you up from it. So you've got to have in the top, you've got salt and pepper and the rest of them. You can play to the game if you like. Norse and Crosses, for example. Two teams, each team takes turns, and you say, uh, I want number three, please. Okay, what is it? An apple and an orange. Explain why it was badly written. Because of uh, C, consonant plus cut, and uh, A, consonant move, uh, an apple. So the idea is the student says what it is and how it became mistranscribed. <coughs> Let's just try it. Any volunteers who can do one of these? <laughs> Number five, yes. Number five, what is it? Frozen peas. Frozen peas. How did they get misread like this? Frozen peas. Consonant change. Frozen, the N at the end of frozen has changed to M because of peas after the P sound. Right. The answer is in the booklet, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have to spend any more time on that. Now listen to this. And, um, well, I guess the answer is actually about the title of the movie. I was going to say, what's it about? Anyway, here's how it goes. He saw her, he liked her face. He asked her her name, she said it was Grace. She liked him, his name was Paul. She gave him a number, he gave her a call. He bought her a gift, he went to her flat. She gave him a drink, she showed him a cat. He liked her, but hated her cat. He never returned, and that was that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she applied the gift again, anyway. This is her focus on read forms of those pronouns there. What did you notice about those read forms? How were they weakened? The H was dropped in most of them. She liked him, so he just said the name. Liked him. The point here is there's lots of examples of the same thing together. It's concentrated. And uh, the idea is that if John Field says, listening, experience is this, you get a trace in your mind every time you hear something, a corpus of your lifetime's experience of hearing. So he's suggesting that we don't store the sound of things in one way, we store it in many different ways, the various different ways we've heard it. And uh, if, if you're trying to make students more, or help them to become more flexible listeners to cope with features of authentic English, then one way of doing it is to give them accelerated experience. A lot of, a lot of examples of a specific thing all together to make it more noticeable, to uh, reinforce the trace of that feature. That's the idea. We'll come back to that idea again later with accents. 